Okay, so continuing with my my big custom brush at 100% opacity, 100% flow, just holding down Option to steal colors, deciding how to get the rest of my dog's body into this image. I think I'll do the back haunch there and maybe a foot there, even though she's sitting on her feet. This is where the caricature element comes in. And then her tail, yeah, it's just gonna kinda come out here. So I don't know that I'll even have it up there. We'll see. All right. Let me fill in a little bit more of that. And you want to keep working with you want to keep working with the 100% brush until the whole silhouette, you know, the whole shape of your subject, whether it's a portrait or an animal, is filled in. You don't want to have any of those gaps coming through. That's why I did the, uh, oh, I'm painting on the wrong layer. That can happen sometimes. That's why I had this in there, right? I, I selected the outside and I filled it in with gray behind. So right now this is what I have. And it's getting there. It's working, but you see these little white gaps? I actually need to paint those. So here's another step that's sometimes helpful to kind of see that. I'm going to make a new background layer. I'm going to say edit fill, but instead of white or 50% gray or black, I'm going to say color. And then I'm going to choose a really obvious color, right? And that shows me, oh yeah, I got to paint in these little spots still. Actually, not on that layer. Make sure you're on the right layer. <laughs> wow, off and off there. that we are going to build on top of this with lower opacity brushes eventually right and then we'll do the details and we'll do the soft edges on the sides but every shape here should be in my opinion fairly soft edged when you're doing digital painting it helps you see where the right edges are And right now I'm doing the base painting, you know, behind this layer. Right. It's all this stuff. So use layers however is most effective for you. Okay. So now there's not as much pink peeking through. That's good. We've gotten it take, taken care of for the most part.
Okay, now I can take this back layer. You erase this stuff. It was painted on the wrong layer. So this is going to happen a lot to you. You're going to accidentally paint stuff on the wrong layer. And you do have to kind of correct it as you go. Otherwise, it hurts you later. So I can just take the magic wand and select both of these. Oops. Try again. Right. And then hit Command X so that they're deleted and saved on the clipboard. And then actually paste them into the right layer. Then lock these. Paste it in where I wanted them. And kind of move it around where it makes sense. I can even transform it, right? Maybe push out his back end a little bit. Oh, but that leaves white space. So there we go. So there we have a good kind of base painting of this little pup in my caricature style. Really focusing on the head. <laughs> now if I decide, okay, that's a little extreme, I could just take the body, merge those layers together, and then transform it. I guess I should do this as a duplicate just in case. Transform it in scale. Yeah, and maybe make it so there's a little bit more room for the body. So still a caricature. But these are where you can use digital tools for their versatility. So if I show his back end there and his back leg, that's nice. And then this works especially well with caricature. And then kind of push all this a little bit longer. So we want to use digital for its strengths. And we have control of all this stuff. Yeah, to have that longer body will be nice. And that, then that shows me, well, there's more base painting I need to do then, right? Behind the head. So then I can actually show this haunch a little bit. And the coloring of it. Maybe not even worry about the tail. It's just behind. Show the belly. This is why if you're doing a, um, an animal, I want you to do the whole body. Kind of struggle with how you'll work with the anatomy. This is very different than our creature composite, right? We're just, we're having to create every pixel. So you're also creating the pose. I might even have to make something up a little bit, like this back foot. 
which isn't in my reference. And then instead of erasing, what I'll generally do for the base layer is just use the lasso and cut and delete. So it's just really bold and aggressive, like scraping paint off of a canvas. All right. So now I save that. Now that I have all my base painting layers together, Let's merge them. Right, so it's these three layers that make it up. I'll show it on white so you can see. It's this, this, and then this. Right. And just to be sure there's not big holes in it, I can fill with color. and see where there's little holes that I might need to adjust. So before I can merge it, let's do that. See, gray like this might work well. As well as layered, you're, you're putting the paint on. Merge these three together. And I do that by selecting them and then going to Layer, Merge Layers. But however you get to your base layer, it should be kind of free-floating like a spot illustration, but completely filled in, right? So that if you added an offset, this is another way you can check. it has a solid shape to it. It's not filling in a lot of stuff inside. The most common basic mistake that people make, students make starting digital painting, is that they, they let the white of the background fill in for their whites. So by merging it, now I get to make a better composition with it before I move on. So I can tilt it, I can warp it again. I can push and pull. Ready to make the caricature. So I think I'm going to raise the head up a little bit. And minimize that ear. I want the slight angle to the head still. There we go. And then how do I like it composed within this? I think that's a little bit better than it was before. All right, so from this to this. Save it. Turn off the stroke, right? Turn on the gray background. And now I wanna think about the lighting. 